the Sega Master System has always been a highly underrated 8-bit system, and in 2020, the console celebrates its 35th anniversary. And what better way to celebrate this landmark occasion than to count down my all-time favorite Master System titles. So, welcome back to part 2 of my top 30 Sega Master System games. And if you've just joined this video, don't forget to check out part 1. We've got very little time to cover a lot of games. So, let's get started! Number 15 Masters of Combat Masters of Combat is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game that most people haven't heard about, much less played. Generally speaking, 8-bit systems were not seen as a good choice for developing fighting games. The 8-bit versions of Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter 2 for the Game Boy were slow and choppy games, for example. But look at how fast and smooth Masters of Combat is! And for that matter, look at how good the graphics look! I'd say this almost passes for an early 16-bit game. The game was also clearly designed around the controller limitations of the Master System. So instead of having a punch and kick button, you have an attack and defense button. And instead, you need to press on the D-pad at different times to have your character input different strikes. Your special moves were also designed with the console limitations in mind, so a lot of them will actually require you to move diagonally on the D-pad, something which was easier to perform on the Master System's D-pad. So much so, that the Japan-only Game Gear port actually changed the special move inputs to a more traditional Street Fighter type layout. I would love to recommend you to go out and buy this game. But unfortunately, it's super expensive now, going for upwards of $300. And while I enjoy the game, I can't, in all honesty, recommend anyone to spend this insane amount on any game. Number 14 Ease The Vanished Omens Ease is a highly influential JRPG franchise that was ported to just about every system from its time, but none of which launched outside Japan, at least not until the TurboGrafx-16 PSP and Windows remakes. But this original Master System port was the West's introduction to the series, which might have been one of the best, if not the best way to play Ease back in the day. TurboGrafx-16 Remake excluded, that is. Anyway, in Ease, you play as Adol, and you're seeking the ancient book of Ease which contain knowledge about the mythical kingdom and information on how to defeat the evil that plagues the land. Throughout the game, you'll be exploring dungeons in a linear fashion, improving your gear and leveling up as you do so. The combat is unique as it's in real time, but you don't have an attack button. Instead, you need to run against enemies in a certain angle or position to count as a strike or you'll get hit. You'll also get to explore towns, speak to NPCs, and progress the plot with some pretty good portraits of the various characters. The game is also FM compatible in Japan, but sadly, they removed this feature in the West, so we're left with the inferior but still good PSG audio.
Number 13. Buggy Run. Okay, so I'm generally not a fan of racing games. I mean, I like my F-Zeros, Burnouts and Wipeouts, but that's about it. But Buggy Run is a really fun racing game. Basically, Buggy Run feels like a mix of Super Off-Road with a dash of Micro Machines thrown in. The game is viewed from an isometric angle just like Super Off-Road, but rather than always viewing the entire racing course, the action is zoomed in and… I don't know, the art style just really reminds me of Micro Machines. The cool thing is, during each race, you can pick up money and power-ups to help you. But make no mistake, just as you can get power-ups, you can also run into traps yourself. At the end of each race, you get a prize reward based on your ranking and you can then use that money, as well as the money you've picked up along the way, to buy new parts for your car, like mines and nitro boosts, but also improve its stats, like your turning, acceleration, top speed, that sort of thing. I feel the game's biggest drawback is its audio, but everything else about it is just amazing and I highly recommend it. Number 12 Deep Deck Trouble starring Donald Duck Most Master System fans will tell you that Donald Duck games on the console are pretty damn awesome. With great gameplay and graphics, while staying true to the look and feel of the Disney property. So it was a given that one of these games would make it onto the list. The hard part was choosing between Lucky Dime Caper or Deep Deck Trouble. In the end, I chose Deep Deck Trouble due to it having better music and better graphics. I mean, seriously, I know I sound like a broken record, but look at how gorgeous this game looks. Once again, it could almost pass for a 16-bit game. Anyway, Deep Deck Trouble is a platformer in which you control Donald and you select which levels you want to tackle first. Jumping is your main form of attack, but you'll also get power-ups to help you along the way. But for the most part, you'll be using Donald's standard moveset, as the game is more about precision platforming than power-ups. One thing I find really cool here is that all the boss fights are completely different from one another. Some you have to fight to win, while others you're just expected to survive. Number 11 Golden X Warrior Golden X Warrior is another attempt from Sega to compete with The Legend of Zelda, just like Golvelius. But while Golvelius was clearly doing its own thing, Golden X is a Legend of Zelda clone true and true, and I don't see that as a bad thing. I mean, for starters, it does have a few things over Nintendo's game, such as towns to visit and NPCs to talk to. Remember, this was launched before A Link to the Past, so at the time it was competing with the original Legend of Zelda and Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. I also feel the game's graphics are better than the first Zelda, though the music is definitely inferior. 
Moreover, I really like some of the weapons and items you get in this game. Stuff like the axe, which can be used to cut down trees. You also pick up magic, items and armor along the way. But for the most part, I actually think I like this game better than the original Zelda title, as this feels closer to something like Link's Awakening. Kensaiden. Kensaiden is... I'm actually not sure what to call it. I want to call it an action platformer, but there are also a few vague hints of a Metroidvania here. Anyway, you play as a samurai in a horror-themed feudal Japan. It plays nothing like the classic Castlevania games, but thematically and art style-wise, that's definitely the closest comparison I can come up with. On the gameplay side of things, the game is a bit stiff to control, but I get the feeling this was done on purpose, as you need to plan your moves, jumps and attacks according to your limitations. What really makes Kensaiden stand out is the freedom you have. Basically, you can select which stage you want to tackle first and you can even backtrack to previous stages. This is important because, as you defeat bosses, you'll earn permanent abilities like the high jump or new attacks. Technically, none of these are mandatory and you can skip over entire stages or lands and just force your way to the final region, but it's definitely recommended you get all of your abilities. Additionally, you'll also find training areas and if you complete them, you get permanent upgrades to your character. This is the reason why I said Kensaiden has a dash of Metroidvania, as knowing where to go, earning upgrades and new abilities is integral to your success. And it's just really fun to build up your character. Oh, and also, you're not going to believe this, I know it's unexpected, but guess what? I also happen to think this game looks like near 16-bit quality. I know, I'm saying a Master System game looks near 16-bit. Shocker, I know. But seriously, check this out. You see, the game is also compatible with FM audio. And when you have it turned on, it just really feels like you're playing an early Sega Genesis or Mega Drive game. So yes, if you get the chance, be sure to check out Kensaiden. Number 9 Land of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse Land of Illusion is the 8-bit sequel to Castle of Illusion on the Master System. Basically, there's two versions of Castle of Illusion, the Master System and Mega Drive ports, and each spun off into their own sub-series with the Genesis getting World of Illusion, while the Master System got Land of Illusion and Legend of Illusion. And out of the 8-bit games, Land of Illusion is definitely the best, due to its emphasis on light puzzle solving as well as an interesting set of powers and abilities, like Mickey Mouse shrinking so he can fit through narrow gaps and scaling walls. From a technical level, the game looks fine, nothing outstanding, but I think the art style more than makes up for it. If you're a Castle of Illusion fan, you owe it to yourself to play this game. Fan 
Fantasy Star. Fantasy Star is the quintessential Master System game. Most lists I've seen place this game as the console's best title. And while I agree this is indeed an amazing title, I also feel it's starting to show its age a little bit. Though not as much as its sequel. But that's a story for another video. Fantasy Star was one of the first JRPGs brought to the West, launching in Japan a mere two days after the first Final Fantasy, but being launched in the West a whopping two years before the first Final Fantasy. It even beat Dragon Quest to the punch. Fantasy Star takes place in a universe which mixes various sci-fi elements with fantasy. So you have swords, shields and dungeons, but also stormtroopers and space travel. Combat is randomly generated and turn-based, as was customary with most JRPGs of this time. But the graphics and animations are far beyond what you'd see in other games. Hell, Fantasy Star doesn't just look like an early 16-bit game. I'd go as far as to say it looks better than many 16-bit RPGs out there. The game also has FM audio in Japan, but just like with ease, this was sadly turned off with the West release. The story is also told through cutscenes, and though you initially start out alone, you eventually meet three other characters who join up with you. Finally, I just love exploring the pseudo 3D dungeons. Yes, you will get lost in these, but I love any game that requires me to get out some graph paper and draw maps, and Fantasy Star is definitely the type of game for that. And if that's not your thing, you can check out maps and guides online, but I do think you'll be missing out on the full experience if you do this. Number 7 Alex Kidd in Shinobi World When making this list, I wasn't sure under which IP I should place Alex Kidd in Shinobi World. Is it an Alex Kidd game or a Shinobi game? In the end, I decided that this is an Alex Kidd game first and a Shinobi title second. As the name implies, Alex Kidd in Shinobi World is a mashup of two of the Master System's biggest franchises, Alex Kidd and Shinobi. And I absolutely love the gameplay in this one. Your character is fast and easy to control, and you have a wide array of moves at your disposal, such as a sword that can be powered up, a spin attack that can destroy blocks or enemies, a wall jump ability, you can knock out enemy projectiles with your sword, you also gotta love the game's colors, high energy music and sense of humor, like how the first boss, Kabuto, was actually supposed to be Mario. You can even see this in a few early screenshots from the game's production. Hell, the boss even shrinks in size after you fit him enough times. Ha! <laughs> I love this! My only issue with this game is how short and easy it is. Number 6 Ultima 4 Ultima 4 is one of the most influential RPGs ever made. Originally, the game was developed for 8-bit computers, but was way ahead of its time in so many ways. You have a morality scale that far surpasses most modern games. In fact, it's so complex that it's often best explained with a Venn diagram. Heck, your main character's class isn't chosen directly. 
Instead, the game will ask you a series of moral questions, and your class is picked based on these answers. And no, there are no right or wrong questions, it all depends on your personal beliefs. So yeah, your starting class is picked based on a clickbait BuzzFeed poll. The game is also open world and can be freely explored whenever and however you want. It was also originally ported to the NES, but it was massively streamlined, making it more like a regular JRPG instead of the Western RPG it is, while redrawing the graphics in a Japanese chibi style. The Master System port, on the other hand, only streamlines the dialogue system, which I feel was for the best, giving you every available topic from a menu instead of requiring you to type them out. The entire game is also turn-based, and I don't mean just the combat, I mean literally everything is turn-based, including walking and talking to NPCs. What I really like about this version is that I feel it's the definitive version of Ultima 4, with the exception of fan-made remakes or patches. And the game is compatible with FM audio, and as a result, I feel it surpasses every other version out there, including the much more powerful Amiga 500 port. This version was entirely remade by Sega, so it's no wonder it came out as amazing as it did. Sadly, it is missing the 3D dungeons of the PC versions. The issue with Ultima 4 is that it's a deep and complex game that requires a lot of your time and attention. Forget about finishing the game if you don't have a notepad at your side at all times. But if you want to play the definitive version of Ultima 4 from an official port instead of a fan-made one, this is the way to go. Number 5 Batman Returns I absolutely love Batman Returns on the Master System. You play as Batman and you have to take down Penguin and his circus freaks. To achieve this, you're armed with a boomerang which can be upgraded several times to increase its range and damage, as well as your grappling hook which lets you jump from platform to platform with ease, and you can also glide when jumping from a high point. What's cool here is how tight the level design is. Your powers and abilities fit each stage perfectly, and there's a wide enemy variety keeping the gameplay interesting. The game will require you to learn the grappling hook's abilities and limitations like the back of your hand. But thankfully, controlling it is intuitive and the gameplay is incredibly tight. I also really like how detailed the graphics are. From the Christmas lights adorning the streets of Gotham to the Oswald Cobblepot election posters. And I should probably mention that the music is pretty awesome. It's PSG only, but it was composed by Yuzo Koshiro of Streets of Rage and Act Razor fame. And it shows, as this is some of the best use of the Master System's PSG audio chip I've ever seen. To me, Batman Returns is one of the quintessential Master System hidden gems and I highly recommend it. Sadly, the boss fights are pretty boring, but the rest of the game more than makes up for it. Number 4 
Shinobi. Shinobi has always been one of my favorite Master System games. And I actually prefer this version over its arcade counterpart. I've always felt the arcade game was too fast and too difficult for its own good. The Master System version, on the other hand, slows the pace down, throws in fewer enemies and gives you a health bar. In Shinobi, you play as a... Shinobi. And you have to rescue... Children? Other Shinobi? I'm actually not sure. As you rescue them, you gain more powerful attacks. So you go from kicks and shurikens to nunchucks and guns. You also have a really cool bonus stage, which I rarely seem to be successful at, and ninja magic, which I never really use. The game also lets you fight in two different planes, and you can usually switch between them at any time you want. And although your moveset seems limited, it's the level design that shines here, as I always feel the game gives you the perfect balance of gameplay enjoyment and difficulty for your moveset. Seriously, to me, the Master System version of Shinobi is one of those games I would not trade the world for. Number 3 Power Strike 2 Power Strike 2 is a shmup by Compile, the same makers behind Musha, Robo Musha, Space Megaforce and The Last Day. And yes, Power Strike 2 plays exactly like those games. I should also point out, there is another game called Power Strike 2 for the Game Gear and also by Compile, but these are two completely different shmups. So, what makes the Master System version of Power Strike 2 so good? Well, it's basically an 8-bit musha. The game is super fast and smooth, throwing dozens of enemies, shots and weapon pickups at you at all times, without ever slowing down or flickering. The graphics are bright and colorful, the music is great and very high energy, and I just really like the concept of playing as a 1930s anime Sky Pirate Hunter. I always have a bit of trouble describing why Compile's best shmups feel so right, as it was already difficult doing it during my Top 30 Mega Drive Games video. The best way I can describe it is the game's intensity. They are good looking, good sounding games that provide an intense shmup experience that doesn't let up and I love every minute of it. Wonder Boy 3 The Dragon's Trap Wonder Boy 3 is just excellent. It basically feels like a Shantae game or what Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link should have been and more. The game starts you at the final dungeon of the previous title, where you reenact the final boss fight once again. Except this time you're playing a much easier and simplified version of said dungeon and boss. Once defeated, the boss curses you and turns you into a dragon, and from there on, you're on a quest to lift the curse and acquire new forms. This will have you visit a main town to buy gear as well as explore new areas and dungeons to further progress your abilities and acquire new forms. So for example, the dragon can shoot fire, 
The Mouseman can climb certain walls and platforms, which lets you explore the world in really unique ways. The Piranha Man can swim, Hawkman can fly, that sort of thing. There's really a lot to unpack here, from exploring a vast 2D world, buying and finding all the gear you need to progress, and unlocking all your various forms. Graphically, the game is rather simple, but charming. And the audio is both PSG and FM compatible, which is definitely a plus. And the best part, there's a modern remake of this game, which actually includes the original, meaning you can play this game even if you don't own a Master System. But, however you choose to play it, you're definitely in for a ride with this one. And my all-time favorite Master System game is... Ninja Gaiden! I freaking love Ninja Gaiden! To me, this is the best classic Ninja Gaiden game! The graphics are amazing, the music is catchy and high energy, the difficulty is just right, starting out really easy, and gradually picking up difficulty, as I always felt the NES games were needlessly difficult and punishing, especially with the birds. But the Master System game also gives you some new moves, like the ability to crawl up from platforms and an improved wall jump. Sure, the boss fights are kind of weak and the cutscenes aren't as good as the NES games, but the gameplay more than makes up for it. I just love everything about this title, from the action, to the power-ups, to the level design, and even the enemy designs. So to me, this is the absolute best Master System game ever made, and definitely the one Master System game I find myself playing the most. Master System is without a doubt the most underrated of the four main Sega consoles. And though we're not seeing as many modern Master System games as we do Genesis games, we're definitely starting to see a few projects being created for it, like Alex Kidd in Miracle World 2 and Silver Valley. And as the years go by, I can only hope we'll see even more new titles in the future. Hey everyone! Thank you for watching Stika's Retro Corner. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. All that fun social media stuff. And if you want to support the channel, check out my Patreon, where you can find all kinds of awesome rewards. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Bye!